All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for flying air out this beautiful day. We're going to talk about the GST, the Graph Standardization Theorem. So we're going to consider situations where a composite, composite means more than one, of translations and scale changes have been applied to a graph. Now, just to give you a heads up, we're going to focus on scale first, translation second. That's going to be the standardization. We're going to standardize by always scaling first. So as we notice, if you were to take a guess, we certainly know that both of these have the same amplitude, right? Um, the same amplitude because there's this dividing by two that's occurring. So the amplitude uh, is equal to two for both of these. All right, uh, period. We know that there is no change uh, from the parent function because we're dividing by one here. So the period remains two pi. We also know there is no horizontal, no horizontal shift, and no horizontal stretch. Okay? So the only thing that's happening here is vertical. So let's see what vertical is happening. We know there's a vertical scale change. And it does do a scale change of uh, by two, by factors of two. But then one of these, probably, we don't know exactly which one yet, one of these is going to go down four. Because clearly they're not exactly the same thing. One of them goes down four, and the other one probably goes down. So which one is which? So it turns out, it turns out that this one is the one that goes down four. Really? Which is, feels contrary. Yeah because of the, the way it's being fractionized. And this one doesn't. And of course, the best way to check it is by looking on Desmos. So here's Desmos. Okay, so let's analyze and see what we hear. Here's my parent function, the green one. And this is the one, so notice that both of these, the red and the blue, they both have an amplitude of two. So let's see here. So it goes from here to here, and so that's a four. So the amplitude is two. Okay, so this one here also has an amplitude of two. So no, no big deal there. Also to consider is our, uh, every single time here, our period is two pi. So that's also something to consider. All right, so what else have we? What else is going on here? We have to consider, well, when does the four actually be four? Because both of these twos say it stretches by two. So the two is an accurate representation of what's going on over here. So let's see, one of these says go up four. Well, let's see here. If I start here at the parent function and I go up one, two, three, oh, it's the blue one that tells me exactly what I see. I see a minus four, so that definitely means shift up four. What does this one mean? Let's count it up to eight. Wait, how does this one get to an eight? And the real answer lies in when I do that. And the key here is when I multiply by two over two in order to get a common denominator, I now put it in this form and the eight is what I see. The eight is what I see. So the moral of the story is this form is the most helpful because this form right here tells me exactly what I see, and it also tells me a particular order. The order being number one, number one, we do a scale change, and then number two, I do my translation. And that will be the blunt brunt, the, that's what we're focusing on today in this lesson. Let's look at the graph standardization theorem, and it says this. Given a pre-image, the original graph, described by a sentence X and Y and the following processes yield the same graph. If we were to replace X with X minus H over A, notice that you have to have uh, the, the big vinculum. The division bar there, that's called a vinculum. All right, and the same thing here. 
is we have to have the large vinculum, as opposed to this, y over b minus k, not, not y over b minus k, but y minus k all over b. So uh, that is the exact same thing as number one, scale change, and then number two, translation, in that order. It has to be scale change first and then translation. So order is important here. So the scale change being whatever A is right here, it multiplies the X. And whatever B is here, it multiplies the Y. And then this is my horizontal shift and my vertical shift. In example one, we're going to explain how this function here is related to the parent function, the graph. So this one says y minus uh, 1 over 2 equals the cosine of x plus pi over 3. So what's nice is my form is good. It has the, the whole, the large uh, vinculum there, the large vinculum. So this is a straightforward interpretation. A straightforward interpretation. Notice that what I'm considering, I'm considering amplitude, period, vertical shift, phase shift, um, etc. And I should also include any uh, scale. All right. So let's see. Amplitude is what? Well, the amplitude is 2. Because that is my scale change. Um, my apologies. Scale changes are amplitude and period. Okay, so the amplitude is just 2. It's straightforward there. And that's this one here. Next, my, remember my period, the 3, helps me find out what my uh, period is because your parent function on the period is equal to uh, 2 pi times A. So my period is 6 pi. So this stretches up, so it's a higher function. And then it stretches out, so it's a little bit more shallow in terms of proportion. All right, next, a vertical shift. Vertical shift, we go to our y. This is my vertical shift. And here it simply says we go up 1. And this one here says I'm going to go left pi. So how is this related to the parent function? Ultimately, it's the parent function stretched vertically by 2 horizontally by 3, then I shift up 1 left pi. So that is the description of what's happening, and this is just a list of what's happening. So here's the answer, here are the answers for a, uh, example 2. Now let's take a gander at converting between forms because it's not always going to be straightforward. It's not always going to be in the proper form. Just like in the olden days, uh, we didn't always have y equals mx plus b. It wasn't always in that form. You had to write it in slope-intercept form, and then you can graph. Same idea here. We're going to write it into a different form by... Um, bringing all the y elements over here and also converting this part into a singly large vinculum. <gasps> then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So first off, conversion. I need to bring the 2 over to the other side. Divide by 2. And next... While I'm here, let me see what I have to do. I have to take this guy here, and it has to be rewritten. Instead of looking like this, it's got to look more like this, where I have something 
above and something below. Okay, so how to rewrite that one? How to rewrite that one? Well, if we recall, when I multiply by 3 here, when I multiply by 3, that's the same as dividing by what? Good, so dividing by 1 third plus pi. Is that cool? Can we have that? Yeah, right. so this is a complex fraction, Yeah. but it ultimately is going to get us to what we want because we, we want it to look like a single fraction. Now, to complicate things even more, I need to have a common denominator. So if I multiply the denominator by one-third, I need to multiply the numerator by one-third. So notice now what stays underneath is one-third. And what's in the numerator is one-third plus one-third pi. So that means we now have x plus one-third pi all over one-third. Now, here's one of those situations where it's no longer pretty, but it tells me exactly what I need to know without any guessing. So now, let's interpret. This one has no shift, no vertical shifting at all because it's plus zero. But we do know it has a vertical stretch. So number one, it has a vertical stretch by two. That's what this guy here says. Next, we have a horizontal compression by one third. So this is a descriptor. We also know that it's going to shift a certain amount. And let's see here, it doesn't shift at all here. So there's no vertical shift, but there is a left shift left one third pi. And now continuing on my interpretation, the amplitude is two. My period is based on the one third. So it's two pi times one third, which is two pi over three. It's been compressed a bit. And of course, the shifting component is also uh, the phase, sorry, this is a phase shift, another way to describe it, of course, phase shift, left, one third, no vertical shift at all. So let's look at another example of, and see how this graph is related, uh, this function. So the first thing I'm going to do is add seven, Add 7 and then divide by 5. So the first one's not too complex to get to. I now have the left side being in uh, graph standardized ization form. But it's this part that I want to convert. I now want all of this to be in its proper form. So how do I do that? Well, let's see. 2x minus pi over 4. Excuse me, pi over 2. Now, what happens with the 2x? Well, the 2x can be written like this, where it's x over 1 half. Why? Because multiplying by 2 is the same as dividing by 1 half. We're just multiplying by the reciprocal or dividing by the reciprocal. Same idea. OK, so that's where the 1 half came from. I just took a reciprocal of that and moved it underneath. Now. In order to finish this problem, I need to make this 2 down below here to be the same as this one. So how do I get 2 to become a half? I have to divide it by 4. And if we recall, dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by half. Sorry, fourth. Yes, I agree. All right, so the final result is this. x minus one-fourth pi all over one-half. And I messed up. That should be a pi there. Now we can interpret 
about how things change. We see that it is a vertical stretch by five, a horizontal compression by one half, a vertical shift by up uh, seven and right one, or excuse me, not up seven, uh, down seven, and right one fourth pi. My amplitude is five. My period is 2 pi times 1 half, which is pi. All right, so now our last uh, skill that we're going to look at today is we're going to write functions given a description, as opposed to having the description, excuse me, having the function and, and writing a description. So we're going to write the function who's uh, a, and, and folks, notice that we're saying a function, because sine and cosine functions are cyclical. So there are an infinite number of options. So we're just going to go with the smallest possible one here. Whose graph will have the characteristics? So if the parent function is sine, we have a phase shift of pi over 5, a period of 2, and an amplitude of 2. So let's see here. Since we have a phase shift this way, we know that the x is going to subtract pi over 5, like that. Okay. Uh, but Swenson, it doesn't say right. You're right. But since it's positive, that's implied. Right. All right. So next, uh, it has a period of pi. So if the period is equal to pi, remember that the period is 2 pi times a. So, and that's an a, not a 9, a. All right, so now dividing both sides by pi, I get a 1. So a is plus or minus 1 half. For simplicity, we don't know if this is a reflection or anything like that. So for simplicity, let's go with the positive. So this is going to be vinculum 1 half in the denominator. I'm going to put parentheses around that whole thing and deal with sine there. And the last one, it simply says amplitude of 2, and there's no vertical shift. So that's going to be more straightforward. Y here, no shift, so I'm not going to say plus or minus anything. And my amplitude being 2, so I'll put that down in the denominator. And there we go, yeah. In this last problem, we're going to write the function again. And this time, it has parent function of cosine and a phase shift of 180 degrees, so minus 180. The period is 45 degrees. So remember, that's going to be 360 times some a. So when I divide by 360, I now found my a, which is 1 eighth. And then our <clears throat> amplitude is one-third, so that goes down below. And there we have it.